Why do we love new plants so much? I don't know, they're fancy and fun and new and sometimes better and sometimes not necessarily better, but they're different. And let's be honest, this time of year is just fun to dream about what might be possible in the garden. So today we're talking about some of the new plants that you might see in your garden center this year. Hi everyone, I'm Erin the Impatient Gardener. I live and garden here in Zone 6A, Southeastern Wisconsin. And on this channel, I love sharing with you information and inspiration to help you uh, have more fun gardening and maybe become better at it. I'm gonna to try to bring you some interesting plants from a variety of different sources because there's a whole bunch of people out there who manufacture and breed plants and get plants out into the marketplace. And sometimes we miss hearing about some of those and there are some really exciting things that are happening. I will say, listen, a new plant isn't always necessarily a better plant. Sometimes we think they're gonna be better, but they're not, but it is fun to talk about new plants. And so that's the, um, the spirit in which I bring you these new plants, which is that it is fun to think about new things and it is exciting and we get to have fun just dreaming even if we don't necessarily ever grow these things. So I'm going to dive right into the plants that have kind of caught my eye for this coming year. Two of them are gray and they're both from Darwin Perennials. The first one is Centauria Raguncina uh, Silver Swirl and this is like a white, this is in the Dusty Miller family. Saw this uh, planted last year down at Ball Horticultural in West Chicago. This is not hardy for me. This is hardy from 6B to 9B, but listen, I'm growing this thing. I will hunt this down and I will grow this because this is a great plant. In containers is where I'm thinking. I mean, as an annual tool, but in containers, mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great, really heavily lobed foliage, beautiful, truly silver foliage, not like silvery blue, like this is silver to white foliage on this. Full sun on this one for sure. And like most silver foliage plants, it really loves well-draining soil. It won't do well, really boggy. But listen, for most of us, I don't think we need to care too much about that soil because stick it in a container, in a full sun container, in potting soil and it will do great. And that is where it absolutely shined. Seriously, I don't know how available this is gonna be, how easy this will be to get, but I'm putting this out into the universe. Please send much of it to me. The other plant that I really fell in love with at Darwin Perennials was this teeny tiny little uh, Stackies uh, Byzantina Little Lamb. This is a lamb's ear, but it's it's a tiny little thing. It's adorable. And it looks exactly like the mini lamb's ear. Um, fabulous ground cover. It looked great in every bed I saw it. And sometimes lamb's ear can kind of, you know, gr like brown out in some areas and just kind of, I think it just kind of rots if it gets too moist or too crowded in there and you just kind of pull it out and it still looks good. I saw no sign of that in these gardens. Now this one is hardy for me, hardy all the way down to 4A up to 8B. Um, best thing about lamb's ear, of course, is that pretty much nothing bothers it. Deer, rabbits, nothing's gonna go after those fuzzy leaves. Um, not super great silver foliage on this. This is definitely more of your sort of silvery green foliage on this. Very much the color of a regular, regular lamb's ear. If anything, maybe a little greener than that from what I saw, but teeny tiny, what does it say? Height two to five inches on this. So I would love this as a ground cover and just let it spread all over. Since I'm on a little bit of a silver plant kick here, and uh, by the way, I'm officially putting this out there. Silver, it's the year of the silver plant, you guys. Gonna be super popular. We've all loved Senecio Angel Wings for a while. All the silver plants are coming in. It just happens to go great with uh, the Pantone color of the year, Peach Fuzz. Anyway, when you see all the silver plants, I want you to say, Aaron called it. Um, this is a plant that I grew last year as it was sent to me as a trial plant from Walters Gardens. This is an Artemisia uh, called Silver Lining. And let's get some info on this. F zones four to nine on this, grows much like other Artemisias. You want full sun on this. Basically almost all silver foliage plants are full sun. Like, oh, not Brunner. Brunner is the uh, exception to that. So this one is gonna be 12 to 16 inches high, 32 to 36 inches wide. 
it has really great texture, really um, um, sort of cut edges look on the on the actual leaves. Now, when this was sent to me, one of the things on the that with the information that came with it suggested that this is not likely to get out of bounds in your garden like some Artemisia can. I personally have had a really bad experience with Artemisia, so I've always look at them with a little bit of a, uh, are you are you going to be scary or not? This one is not supposed to get overly aggressive like that. They're also pointing out that this would be a great one in containers. I fully agree. Um, actually, this would be, I mean, this is very similar, not quite as silver foliage as that silver swirl was, but this would be, a, if you couldn't find one or the other, you could probably use them interchangeably. So flocks are having a moment. There are so many new flocks varieties that have come out on the market over the last couple of years. The um, perennial plant associations plant of the year which by the way the way they do theirs is that is something that is voted on by their members who are generally um, nursery owners and landscapers and garden designers so it's an, and it's never a new plant and it has to be a plant that's widely available on the market but it's never a new plant so the perennial plant associations plant of the year is never a marketing thing it's truly a plant of the year that they're trying to draw attention to. And this year, that is um, a phlox called uh, Jean, bright pink, beautiful. So phlox in general are gonna have a moment. You will see that specific one, garden centers get on top of the plant of the year several years ahead. So you should see that one all over the place. But one of the new plants that's coming out from Walters Gardens, and this is gonna be in the Proven Winners line, is Pink Lightning. and this is super, super bright. And I kind of love a bright phlox. I think if there's one plant that can carry off basically a neon color, I think it's a phlox. So they describe this as saying each flower has a, is a bright true pink with a central white starburst pattern. And the nice thing with phlox is that many of the new phlox we're seeing, this truly is an example of better plants because phlox have a lot of disease issues. They have a lot of powdery mildew issues and most new phlox are bred for disease resistance. So this really is a situation where sometimes a new plant really can be a better and different plant. Really broad hardiness range on this, zones three to eight, so super hardy, 24 to 30 inches uh, wide and 30 to 36 inches tall, so this is a tall one. Um, must be known, by the way, very attractive to all sorts of insects and pollinators, things like that. Uh, but it must be stated that flocks are deer magnets. It's real hard to keep deer off of flocks. You really have to stay off up on deer repellent. Um, the good news is, is that often they cut them back by half for you. They do sort of a Chelsea chop on them and then they'll come back and they bloom. And so they bloom a little bit later, but they bloom shorter and you never have to worry about flopping with some of these taller ones. Now, Proven Winners Annuals has a whole bunch of, they always introduce a whole bunch of great new annuals. Um, and I'm fortunate to try many of those most years. Um, and I think there've been, if you've been following any other YouTube channels. Many of them have already talked about the proven winners annuals of the year. So I'm going to include a couple of them, but I'm not going to repeat what you've heard in a lot of other places. Proven winners does such an amazing job with their marketing that um, they really do a great job getting that message out there. So many of you have probably heard of those. The, the kind of um, unsung hero, I think, of the new Proven Winners varieties that I got last year was actually an Ipomoea, an ornamental sweet potato vine, Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Mahogany. It is, you know, reddish, reddish to purplish. That was a fabulous, fabulous plant. The best red-ish, purple-ish uh, sweet potato vine that I've personally grown um, definitely stays within its bounds. It it, it filled out nicely. It trailed a little bit. It did not eat a container like some sweet potato vines could. It held its color incredibly well. The new leaves do come out green, but very quickly turned to this sort of reddish color. Um, it was it was by far, I would say, certainly, maybe it's maybe the best sweet potato vine I've ever grown. That might be going too far, but it's certainly up there. And I haven't heard a lot of people talking about that one. And it's just one that um, I know it's not as flashy as some of the new petunias, but um, 
it's a really good plant and we all need those foliage plants in our containers. Now last year I did plant a couple of columnar apples in containers and a lot of people were looking for columnar apples and actually um, there is a new brand of columnar apples coming out. Um, this one is, is developed by Plants Nouveau and it's called fruit stacks and they are short growing columnar apples and the whole idea is that you don't have to stand on a ladder to go um, to go harvest them. So they have, I think, six different varieties. They have All Red, Blushing Delight, Golden Treat, Sweet Tart, Tangy Green, I love a green apple, and Tasty Red. I think the, they're really pushing these for ornamental as well for a hedge and certainly in a container in a small growing situation, much like I did with those columnar apples last year. I think you're gonna start seeing these um, a lot more readily available. Now, of course, I haven't grown these and I can't say much about how these specific apples grow, but I love the idea that there's some more of these uh, columnar apples growing out there. And by the way, columnar apples, um, it's not like an espalier thing where you have to prune it. They grow in that shape. It doesn't need um, severe pruning in order to keep it growing just in a skinny little column upright. And before we get into any more, let me know which plants you're looking for this year. And don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps the channel a lot and I appreciate it. So if you need a big plant for shade or sun, I think we might have hit what that could be. It's called stone hedge, not henge, stone hedge begonias. And there's a series of them. Uh, right now I'm specifically looking at one called rose bronze leaf so it's got a dark leaf it's got a really pretty rosy flower on it you know if you don't know scale it looks like any other begonia maybe however this thing grows to four feet tall imagine a four foot tall begonia imagine what you could do in a container at an entrance or in the ground with this um and it grows quick, obviously, because this is an annual. So uh, the, the description here is eye-catching bronze foliage, extreme vigor, and well-branched mounding habit, low maintenance, self-cleaning with excellent heat tolerance. So all of those things make it very adaptable to many, to many different areas. So one of the plants that totally knocked my socks off last year when I was at Cultivate, I sort of picked it as my favorite new plant that I saw there. And I did do a fair amount of like, wanting to know if anyone needed the one that they had there to have a home and the answer was was it had a home it didn't need me i'm hoping perhaps one needs me this year uh it is ruby ruffle patio peach now listen i don't i've never grown one of the, i've never grown a peach of any variety including the ornamental rice there is an ornamental peach that's really pretty called bonfire um i don't know specifically side by side how this one compares but the one I saw there and all the images I've seen have shown really beautiful sort of plum colors on the leaves here. Nice, deep plum leaves. They're very long and skinny with rough, kind of ruffled edges on them. There is a lot of texture going on. I will say some of the pictures look a little bit like um, Cousin It. It's a lot of heavy foliage. Of course, it gets this beautiful kind of corally pink uh, flowers in spring. So this baby is gonna be hardy in zones five to eight. It's a small tree. It's only gonna be four to five feet tall and wide. You know, the place where I think about this growing is in a container. To me, it's, it's just the most, I mean, I think it might be really interesting. Obviously it's, um, um, it's hardy. So you either wanna keep it in that container all the time or have a plan for how you're gonna manage that. To me, this has, you know, container focal point written all over it. I don't know the growth rate on it. Um, you know, obviously it might be one of those, it'd be nice if you could pick up a, a semi-mature one and then use it in that way. If you have to put a lot of time into growing it before it gets any size, you know, that that's sort of a, a labor of love and not an instantaneous container solution. However, I think just in a grouping of containers, um, I don't know. Uh, if I had one of these, I'd certainly find a good place to use it. I'll tell you that. So the folks over at Southern Living Plant Collection have a few things that I think are really interesting. The first one is Agapanthus blackjack. I think it won, yes, it won, it was the plant, um, the new plant introduction or the plant of the year at the Chelsea Flower Show this year. So it's been across the pond and they love it too. 
super dark, dark, dark purple foliage on this. Uh, 14 to 20 inches high, 14 to 16 wide. Uh, full sun to part shade on this. I, more full sun, I'm thinking. USDA zones 8 to 11B. So, of course, obviously not hardy here. However, this thing is so pretty. Next up is a new Colocasia. This one's coming out. This is also a Southern Living Plant Collection plant. Uh, much like uh, Royal Hawaiian Waikiki Colocasia was that I grew last year. Um, this is another great Colocasia that um, it's being offered by them. This is called Redemption. Shiny dark purple leaves with a hot flash of fuchsia right through the middle. Um, full sun, hardy zone seven to 11, the three feet tall by three to four feet wide. Basically the same size as that Waikiki. Really stunning color. I'm certain that the best color is gonna come out on this one in, in full sun. So if you try to push it, I'm guessing you won't have as much contrast there. Uh, I hope I get a chance to grow this one too, but it's, it's really a stunner. Um, you know, with all dark foliage plants, you just have to make sure you have something that's not dark next to it or that it's standing in front of something that's lighter because they can get lost. So contrast is always good in terms of color when you're dealing with those dark foliage plants. Now, I love Amanda Villa. I think they're beautiful. I haven't grown them for a few years because they're quite expensive to buy. And since I've been playing around with growing annual vines uh, from seed, it's hard for me to justify growing them. But when I saw this next plant last year, when I was down at, again, the ball, the gardens at ball, I thought, well, now there's a Mandevilla that might get me grown it again. They have a new variety that is called, or it's new to them. Yep. This variety that you're going to see is called Agate Extra Extra Large Mandevilla. And that is what caught my eye. The flowers, I would say four inches across, maybe. The biggest flowers I've ever seen on a mandevilla. And it looks like a mandevilla, like a normal mandevilla in all other regards, but enormous flowers. This is all the same information that would be for almost any mandevilla. This is gonna get six to nine feet tall, 12 to 16 inches wide. And I believe it's, avail it's available in a scarlet and a white. And I think, what I think I also saw a pink one down there. I don't know if that's going to be available or not. Um, they say that this series was also bred for extreme heat, drought, and bad weather resistance. And they said increased branching and blooming capacity versus current market competitors. So that's how they're setting themselves aside in addition to these, to these other flowers. And then I'm very sad to tell you that the last plant I have to tell you about, I got very excited about, and I've just been told they've pushed the consumer release off to 2025. And I think it's because this plant is quite slow growing. This is Aspidistra Tokyo Skies. This is another Southern Living Plant Collection plant. Um, Aspidistra is cast iron plant. I am fascinated by cast iron plants. Um, I've seen them my whole, I've seen them forever down when I go to Florida or whatever. They seem to grow very well there. Um, I'm often fascinated by plants I can't personally grow super well. This one is really gorgeous. It has um, these sort of speckled variegation on it. it it's a real stunner. Um, this one is shade to part shade because that's pretty common with cast iron plants. It's only hardy zones 8 to 10. However, these work quite well as house plants. So for me personally, I would, if I got my hands on one of these, I would grow this and then I'd bring it in and grow it as a house plant. Because, I mean, normally I could just do that as an annual and toss it out and be fine and just buy it again the next year. But this is a pretty slow growing plant. Cast iron plants don't grow particularly quickly. So you really are gonna have to kind of coddle it for years if you want one of some size. If you start over every year, you're always gonna have kind of a smaller plant. So unfortunately, you probably won't find that one. If you do find that one out there, you should snatch it up because I don't think it's gonna be uh, in, in wide release. But you know, a lot of these, and I also just have to quickly cover a few shrubs, many of which I've already talked about in my hydrangea video because if you like hydrangeas, this is your year. I mean, I think every year has been your year for a while if you like hydrangeas because uh, there's a lot of them. But there are several new ones that are coming out. The most notable and the one that 
you are going to want, and I say this because I just think everyone's going to want it, the one that's going to take garden centers by storm, I can pretty much guarantee you is going to be Eclipse. And that is being released by Bailey Nurseries. That is a macrophylla, so be warned in terms of bud hardiness. Beautiful, dark, dark, dark foliage with pink flowers on it. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, I think that will be the hottest hydrangea release in quite some time. Of course, Proven Winners has some great hydrangeas coming out. One of them that I'm personally quite excited about is Tough Stuff Top Fun. This is hydrangea serrata, a mountain hydrangea, um, a series of hydrangeas um, or a um, variety of hydrangeas that I am really uh, excited for. They do really well in my cooler climate. They have kind of a lace cap uh, flower to them, which I tend to prefer. The well, I like a difference. I mean, I don't necessarily prefer it over one or the other, but it's nice to have something a little different. Uh, super hardy zones four to nine on this. Um, but all these hydrangeas, I mean, I would have to say hydrangeas are one of those one of those areas where they really are working hard to um, correct some of the things that, you know, to make the perfect hydrangea. So in many cases, that is about just pushing out flower after flower after flower. And um, this one should probably do that um, blooms on old wood, new wood, all the woods. And of course, uh, because it's got those kind of lace cap flowers, uh, a big hit with pollinators and insects and things that use your garden other than you three, three feet by three feet on the size on that one. Maybe it's, I think it's actually two to three feet tall and wide. So I think all of the plants that I mentioned here are truly new varieties out on the market. Keep in mind that sometimes plant companies call a plant new when it's new to their line not necessarily, so you might know it under some other name. I mean, Coffee Cups Colocasia is a great example of that. That was available in the trade for many years and then Proven Winners brought it in and added it to their line and it got a huge marketing push that it deserved, by the way. Um, when it was added to the Proven Winners line, it was kind of billed as a new plant, even though other people had grown it before. Okay, that is it. Obviously, this is the tip of the iceberg of new plants. You'll find more and more and more of them. But these are some that I thought were really interesting. I know, well, honestly, if I put them on this list, I'm probably quite interested in them. So I'd be happy to have any of these and I'll be looking for some of those for sure. Um, and in my head, I've already designed some things around them without any idea whether I can actually get my hands on them or not. Don't get frustrated if you can't get your hands on them. Sometimes these things are in sort of short supply the first year, but it's good to have your eye out for them or maybe call up your garden center and let them know that if they can get some, you'd be interested in having them. You never know. Okay, let me know in the comments what new plants you are looking for this year.